Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at another ThinkBook from Lenovo. This time it is their 14P G2, and this has a 14-inch OLED display and a Ryzen processor. We're going to take a closer look at this and what it's all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $1,600 or so as configured. This is kind of the higher end model. You can get in the door for around $1,200 or less with an IPS display and a slightly less powerful Ryzen processor. We have a nice 14 inch OLED display though on this one. Uh, this is running at 2880 by 1800 for its resolution. That's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. The brightness is around 400 nits and it covers 100% of the P3 color gamut. Additionally, this display is running at 90 Hertz. So it feels quick because you have a very fast refresh rate on the internal display. It's just a really nice machine for doing graphics work and as you'll see in a few minutes, even a game or two. The real advantage of the OLED display, in my opinion, is the contrast ratio. You get very deep blacks on the display and that makes a big difference, I think, for overall display quality. A lot of cell phones out there have been running with these OLED displays for a while, but we haven't seen too many of these displays on laptops, but this year we're starting to see more manufacturers integrate them into some of the more premium configurations. And if you're doing any kind of photo editing or video editing or any kind of creative work, uh, the OLED display is what I would recommend you go with. Now this one has a Ryzen 9 5900H processor. These are great chips for graphically intensive tasks like photo editing and video editing. Our model here has 16 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel configuration and one terabyte of NVMe solid state storage. You cannot upgrade the RAM, but you can upgrade the storage on this if you want. Now the weight on this one is just over three pounds or 1.4 kilograms. It's very well balanced and that means you can move the display around here without having to hold down the keyboard deck. It's got a nice feel to it. The display will go pretty much flat here, but it's not a touch display, so you will need to interact with the trackpad, but you do have a great degree of freedom here to move things around. And of course, you've got your McAfee warnings that pop up until you get rid of that software. Now, the webcam on this one is running at 1080p. It's nice to start seeing some higher resolution webcams on these premium level laptops, and it's running at 30 frames per second max. You do have a shutter mechanism on here like you do on other Lenovo laptops to block the lens. The build quality overall feels pretty good. The keyboard deck and the lower portion of the laptop are made out of plastic, but it's a mylar material, so it's got a good amount of strength to it. It doesn't creak or bend. It feels pretty solid. The top of the lid here is aluminum, so the screen is pretty well protected. Now you probably saw some ports sticking out of the back here, so let's start on the back for ports. You've got an HDMI output. This is HDMI 2.0, so you can drive a 4K display. You've got two USB-A ports and a micro SD card reader here on the back, along with its fan exhaust. And we'll look at its performance uh, under load in a few minutes. On the left-hand side, you have two USB Type-C ports. These are not USB 4, nor are they Thunderbolt, so you cannot hook up an external GPU to this one, but they are full service, so you can send display out, you can plug in power. In fact, the power supply that it comes with here, this little 65 watt thing will plug into one of these two ports, and of course it supports USB data devices. You got a headphone jack over here, and then on the other side you have another fan exhaust and just a Kensington lock, but a good amount of ports here that I think are quite efficiently placed. Now this does not have a very large battery, so I would expect about seven to eight hours of battery life doing basic kinds of tasks like web browsing and email and word processing. If you got the display brightness turned up and really working on some heavy duty stuff like video editing on the laptop, that of course will eat into the battery life more significantly. Now the keyboard on this one is your standard Lenovo keyboard. That is not a bad thing because their keyboards are quite nice. It is backlit, it's got great travel, good tactile feedback. 
The keys are well spaced apart from each other, so it's a very nice keyboard to type on. They have a few things here on the function keys of Note. Uh, one that I like is the support key because they have so many different models at Lenovo. Uh, what you do here is hit the key, and what that will do is pull up a web page that will take you direct to the support page for the laptop that you own. So you don't have to dig around the support pages too long to find what you're looking for. Additionally, they have some keys for controlling voice over IP software so you can answer a call uh, with a key press once you get everything configured. There's a fingerprint reader here in the upper right hand corner that doubles as your power button. And then you've got a very nice trackpad here that feels very premium and is quite accurate. So altogether, the input options on this one feel nice and in line with other Lenovo laptops that we've looked at. All right, let's take a look and see how it performs. We'll start with some basics here, a little web browsing. So we'll load up Google Chrome and go over to the nasa.gov homepage like we usually do. Now I have a Wi-Fi 6 access point in the house and this supports Wi-Fi 6. And as you can see, everything is very fast and responsive here rendering. Uh, one thing you can't see because I shoot these videos at 30 frames per second is just how fast everything is scrolling on this because we do have that 90 hertz display here. It just feels very, very quick and responsive, more so, of course, than it would if it was running with a standard 60 hertz display. So web browsing is quite fun on this one. And it also seems to be doing quite well with video. I'm playing back some YouTube right now at 1080p at 60 frames per second. No drop frames here, and it looks great on the OLED. It really pops more so than it does on a typical IPS display because of that contrast ratio. And of course, my camera doesn't do this display any justice. One thing that I like to remind people about on a 16 by 10 display like this is that you will get some letterboxing on the top and bottom when you're watching most media. And that's because we are at a different aspect ratio than your typical TV might be. So that added height is better for web browsing and document editing and that sort of thing, but you will get these letter boxes when you're playing back a piece of 16 by nine content. And that's the kind of content you'll find on most video services. And on the browserbench.org spinometer test, we got a score of 202.2 on the Ryzen 9 5900H here. And that puts this in line with the top end Intel i7 processor that you can get at the moment and it's very competitive against the Apple M1. So let's move on now to gaming. We've got Red Dead Redemption 2 here running on the laptop. This is running at the lowest settings at 1080p, and we're getting about 30 frames per second here uh, playing the game on the Ryzen processor. And it looks great in these nighttime scenes, again, because you've got that OLED running with that deep contrast ratio. So you can play a triple A title here, provided you keep your settings as low as you can get it. And this is Doom Eternal running at 1928 by 1200, again at low settings. And we were able to get north of about 40 frames per second pretty consistently here. So a very playable experience, although of course not running close to the full refresh rate of this display. And we also ran Fortnite at a slightly higher resolution in settings. This is 2880 by 1800 with medium settings. And as you can see here, we're in the 50 frames per second territory. Sometimes it goes up to 60, and I think you could very easily adjust the resolution and graphical settings down to a point where you could get a consistent 60 frames per second out of this game. So these Ryzen chips are really well suited for creative work, but also for playing a game every once in a while. And on the 3D Mark Times by Benchmark test, we got a score of 1,426. And you can see that on that benchmark, this laptop performs quite well against other Ryzen machines we have looked at from this generation of processors. But take a look at the i7 1165G7. It does have slightly better graphical performance than the Ryzen does, although this Ryzen does much better for its CPU score on that test. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 98.9%. You can also see what the temperatures were on the computer when that test concluded, and that indicates we won't see much thermal throttling with this even under heavy sustained load. The fan noise isn't bad on this either. Uh, just remember to keep the bottom here clear so you can get that airflow going through. And if you're able to do that, I think you'll see very consistent performance out of this one. Now the speakers on this are on the bottom, 
and they're a little bit tinny. This is the one area where I think this laptop falls a bit short is in its audio quality. They're quite loud though, and you have good stereo separation. So I think for doing voice calls and Zoom meetings and that sort of thing, it'll be fine. But for music and games, you might want to attach headphones or connect something up via Bluetooth. Let's take a look now and see if it can run Linux. All right, so we've got Ubuntu booted up right now and it looks great on this OLED display. It detected the display properly. We've got audio working, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, pretty much everything just came right up when we booted up Ubuntu here. This is 21.10. So I think if you are looking to run Linux on this, you'll be able to do so. And as you can see here, it really performs quite nicely. So overall, I'm very pleased with this ThinkBook, like I've been with some of the other ThinkBook models we've looked at over the last year. This one, of course, stands out with its OLED display, which looks spectacular. And I really like thin and light and compact laptops with good graphical performance. And it's nice to see a Ryzen offering in this form factor. So it's very portable, great for graphics and video, and pretty good for gaming as well. And that is going to do it for our look at the ThinkBook 14P Gen 2. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.